Today we're going to look at constructing short-run cost curves from a schedule of data. We're going to be looking at total cost curves. The next video will be about average cost curves with the exact same data. Um, you'll see more often we pay attention to the average cost curves, but the total cost curves are useful in revealing a few relationships. Keep in mind the difference um, between these terms. Remember the marginal costs are the change from one to the next. So if I'm making say five and I go to six, the marginal cost is that difference. The variable cost is all of those marginal costs added together. So it's saying, well, if I'm making five, what are the total of all the variable costs together? So they're similar concepts, um, but the variable cost is um, more inclusive. Remember, fixed costs are costs that don't change over time, or they don't change as you produce more and more. And then total costs are going to be the variable cost added to the fixed cost. You see some math on that here. So marginal cost plus marginal cost, etc., etc., equals the total variable cost. And then total variable cost plus total fixed cost equals the total cost. So starting here with this data, Remember, when we do this, we're going up by one, we're producing one, two, three, four, etc. This is the only assumption we're making is the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns. So, we don't see any, any marginal cost when the quantity is zero, obviously. But when we produce the first one, let's say that our marginal costs are gonna be four. Okay, well then when we go to produce the next one, the marginal cost, the eventually part, say that this will fall to something like three and then fall again perhaps to two but eventually because of diminishing marginal returns these costs are going to increase so we see from this point now the costs are going up and up and up as we continue to produce one more well from there we can start to derive the rest of this information the total variable costs are simply the marginal costs added together. So here, the total variable cost is just four to nothing. So four, here it's four and three, seven. And we can fill in the rest of the curve that, or the rest of the table that way. The fixed costs are just that, they're fixed. So they're not going to change no matter what. So no matter whether I make one or zero, or seven, the fixed costs are always the same. The total cost then is just simply adding across. So zero and five is five, four and five is nine, seven and five is 12. Now we're gonna take this information and bring it across onto our cost curves. Let's start with fixed costs because it's actually the easiest. So with fixed cost, all this is going to be is 5, which is right here, and if I produce 1, my fixed costs are 5, and if I produce 7, my fixed costs are 5. So fixed costs is just a horizontal line all the way across. Does it curve? It doesn't change. Now let's graph the marginal costs. Typically, when we draw total cost curves, we don't do anything with marginal cost. To be honest, the reason is that there's not an important relationship between marginal cost and total cost. However, the marginal cost curve is very important when we draw average costs instead of total costs. We'll start with total variable costs first. Remember, when the quantity is zero, the total variable costs are also zero. So this cost curve is going to start right there at the origin. When the quantity is one, these come up to four there. When the quantity is two, they go up to seven, which is about there. When it's three, they go up to nine. And then when it's four, they go up to 12. So let's actually talk about this for just a second. What we see is that this curve is becoming flatter and flatter. It's becoming, uh, it's, has less and less slope. From this point forward though, what we're gonna see is the next jump. So we went from zero up to four, right? Then up to three, and then up two, and now we've gone back up three. Notice this is the marginal cost. So this 
this curve has been getting less and less steep, but now it's going to get a little bit more steep. So this slope between those two points is a little bit more steep than the previous one was. From there it goes up to 16, a little bit more steep, up to 21, a little bit more steep, and then up to 27, there. So this is total variable costs. And again, you see it get gradually, it, it's less and less steep, and then becomes more steep as the production goes up and up and up. The total cost curve is actually, um, remember, the only difference between this number and that number is the five, the total fixed costs in between. So what we can do from this is this curve, the total variable cost curve, is just going to be translated up by five. So this point moves up by five, which is of course there. This point moves up by five, which is of course there. And up by five, and up by five. So what we can do is just make sure that each of these comes up by the same amount. So our total cost curve has the same thing. It gets flatter and flatter until the same point where now it's becoming steeper and steeper and steeper. So that's total costs there. A few observations from this diagram. Again, the gap between each of these points is the exact same as the gap of the total fixed costs below it. So these two have the same shape. My drawing isn't that great, but they do. They have the same shape. They'll never touch, of course, because they're separated by the fixed costs, which are five. You can see the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns in that the good thing, which is the output, is the x-axis, and the bad thing, which is cost, is the y-axis. So we see improving returns as this is more and more flat, and then the uh, diminishing marginal returns are occurring as it becomes more and more steep in each of those two curves. Any questions or comments, leave them below.